Hi there, this is Deidre Brill and welcome to my presentation on digitization in the library. We're here to learn about how digital surrogacy could benefit our library. So first we need to discuss, well, what is digital surrogacy? And a surrogate is a term for a computerized reproduction of a physical object. In this case, digital photographs of items within our library. And while manuscripts and other written works are among the most popular, uh, paintings and tapestries, sculptures, and ephemera can be captured and shared online as well. Now, some of the most renowned libraries and museums in the world have created digital surrogates for many of the items in their collection. And in this way, treasures that are housed in these places are also accessible to interested people all across the globe. And we could do the same. We could make our treasures available to students, researchers, or simply interested observers that are outside of our own community. Digital surrogacy is also a way of preserving fragile items for posterity, ensuring that some of our items uh, don't get lost to deterioration or accident. And for um, older items, as a, as a digital collection, they can be published and shared openly with, of course, proper citation to our library. Metadata on digital items would help us and others to find and use the items in our collection, including any of our fragile items that are not typically on display. And then finally, we can also use our own digital images to engage with others and promote our library and our work. By sharing our digital surrogates via social media, we can prove that our library is accessible and is a player with other libraries that are doing the same to share their collections online. Many image viewers have the ability to pan and to zoom on digital images, allowing for a close-up look at objects that may have small or hard to see details. This can allow for an even closer examination of items that may be kept under glass on display or might not even be on display at all due to the item's fragility. One example is here from the Getty Museum, and you can see that this folio page is titled Unarmed Knights of the Round Table at the Castle of King Arthur. The image on the left shows us a full page view, and if we use the image viewer to zoom in closer, we can see via the picture on the right that the picture shown in the page in the center actually has a castle and three faces of knights that we could zoom in even closer to see. Now, of course, how does the digitization process work? Well, first we have to assess the item. Curators would choose which collection items should be widely shared through digitization. And since the process to create surrogates can be time consuming, prioritizing manuscripts for treatment is an important first step. Also, the condition of the physical item has to be considered to ensure that the digitization project won't damage the item, or also that imperfections can be viewed and noted in a digital surrogate. We also want to arrange and photograph. Um, any imaging equipment has to be calibrated for each item before photographing. The size and durability of the item are gauged, and tools and support are chosen to best suit the needs of the item in keeping it uh, safe. Lighting will vary depending on what needs to be highlighted in the manuscript, and a lot of adjusting and trial and error can occur with photography. Next up, we have to select the best photos to use because we want minimal edits to be made to the final digital photographs, um, just along the lines of cropping, for example. And then we will also assign metadata to each image to allow for searchability. And then finally, we will do some final checks to ensure any other information um, that needs to be included on the surrogate and also to bundle the surrogate with any other items to create a collection. Then it'll be posted online and a digital file will also be stored in a repository for backup. Some of the tools of digital surrogacy, uh, you need to have imaging applications. Um, some of those might be software or open source applications. Some examples are Golden Thread, Mirador, Omika. Um, we would also need to have a digital camera, of course. And then many digital archivists will fashion some of their own tools, ones that work for the kinds of items that they are photographing. Uh, this can include jerry-rigging different forms of lighting or supports or props to hold books open or to place cameras at a good angle, as we can see in the image on the right with the lights and the camera positioned above the manuscript page for photographing. 
And then also rulers and color targets are sometimes placed alongside manuscripts in the photos to give a sense of scale to the surrogate and to accurately allow for matching colors in the digital item to the original piece as shown in the image below. Now, what are best practices of the digitization process? Well, we want to take good pictures with multiple types of lighting the first time around because you want the surrogate to mimic the original as closely as possible with minimal edits. We also need to describe the item with the most expansive and accurate metadata possible to ensure searchability. And this might also mean that we're going to photograph more than just the pages of the manuscripts. We want to photograph bindings, covers, cases, because those can all be important aspects of the history and significance of an item. We will also want to use um, meta metadata standardization to allow for ease for our surrogates to be shared with other institutions and researchers. And we also want to use our surrogates to promote our library and collections whether through our own website and or, or social media. Standardization is incredibly important because we need to ensure that digital surrogates from different organizations have some baseline form of interoperability. And the organization that is working on that is the IIIFC. Now IIIF stands for International Image Interoperability Framework, which is sort of a shared agreed upon guideline for digital images in repositories. Some of those guidelines include things like linked data, standardized web protocols. Um, this is run by the IIIFC or the consortium, which is opened to any interested individuals and organizations who want to contribute to these guidelines. IIIF is not a data platform or a form of storage. It is simply the guidelines for how those images should be created, loaded, shared. And the ultimate goal is to provide, quote, uniform and rich access, end quote, uh, to the images that are uploaded by libraries and museums. That quote comes from IIIF's About page. Now, Mirador is one example of an actual image viewing platform. It is open source, it is web-based, and it works in accordance with the IIIF guidelines. Uh, it is very important to note that this is just one example of many for digital um, viewing platforms and others also work in accordance with IIIF and they can all be embedded into our own website for uh, using shared code in order to share our images of our digital surrogates. Now Mirador is the best at viewing comparison. It has the ability to pull images from multiple repositories uh, to be able to compare and this gives it the ability to also be an online workspace for uh, working with images. And finally, we'll look at a few project examples of um, other libraries and institutions that have digitized some of their collections. One example comes from the Library of Congress. In 2017, they released a digital collection of papers from U.S. founding father Alexander Hamilton. These are surrogates of his original items. Uh, contains about 12,000 items in this collection alone, such as uh, letters, deeds, certificates, speeches, all kinds of items from the man's personal and familial and work lives. This collection's release was uh, particularly timely due to interest from the general public in this man and his life based um, off of the musical Hamilton. Another example comes from the Bodleian Library. Uh, in 2012, to mark Shakespeare's 450th birthday, they received a donation that allowed them to create a full digital circuit, surrogate of the entire first folio that they have of Shakespeare's plays, and it was released the following year. And this particular um, collection is very interesting because it allows for PDF downloads of full text of images from the um, plays, which is available to the public. And then finally, the British Library also has a digital surrogate of the Magna Carta, the major historical political document from 1250. Now, this is a single page document um, of the Magna Carta within their overall digital collection. But the BL created a further collection around it because they worked with experts to create an online exhibit 
of original content of articles and teaching documents that help bring the Magna Carta to life in our current present day. And they also paired this particular work, this digital surrogate, in a collection of other digital surrogates of historical items about King John and other copies um, such as an original copy of the Mag Magna Carta complete with seal that is unreadable because it suffered fire damage in the 1700s, but still proves that uh, it is very much of interest and worth today to view and it shows how physical objects can change over time. Thank you so much for your time today. We hope that this presentation shows you the worth of digitization in libraries.